everybody. Welcome to Learn With Seth. This is one of the videos as part of our Lessons in Law series. The focus is on OCR A-Level Law, but it will be useful to anybody studying law. If you like the videos, please do subscribe and press the like button at the bottom. This is our second lesson on Occupier's Liability. In the first lesson, we looked at the Occupier's Liability Act 1957, which lays down liability in respect to lawful visitors. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the Occupier's Liability Act 1984, and this lays down the law in relation to unlawful visitors. So what liability the occupier, occupier might owe an unlawful visitor who might be damaged or harmed um, on, um, on, on the occupier's property. So I'm going to cover the reasoning behind this liability, its scope, what needs to be um, taken into account, the restrictions, and then um, very briefly, to look at the liability owed to child trespassers. So the 1984 Act arose really through, from the famous case British Railways Board versus Herrington. Um, and that case was actually incorporated into the 1984 statute. I've already studied this case before. If you remember, um, this is where there was damage to a fence and actually in the community people often used the, um, the, the hole in the fence as a shortcut across the railway line. And unfortunately a six-year-old was um, playing on the tracks and he was burnt whilst he was playing on the live track. So he was a trespasser. Uh, there was a hole in the fence. They weren't supposed to be on the on on the railway line. However, um, there was evidence that the railway board knew of the damaged fence and knew that people did go on the lines. When British Railways Board versus Herrington, the court held that yes, there was a duty of care owed to a trespasser when the occupier knows of the danger and that there could be trespassers. However, this duty of care is limited. And as I said, this ruling has been incorporated in the Occupier's Liability Act 1984. Just a little aside in relation to this case, this case is a really good case to use when you're looking at judicial precedent, because it's a great example of the House of Laws using the 1966 practice statement to overrule a past decision. The, the past decision being um, laid down in Addy versus Dunbrook. Um, and basically they said that um, they would overrule this decision due to social and physical conditions in communities changing, particularly with the lack of um, play areas for children. They felt it was time for occupiers to owe trespassers a, a limited duty of care. Let's look at the scope of the liability laid down in the 1984 Act. Well, as we know, the Act relates only for, to unlawful visitors, the trespassers. Um, don't forget, a lawful visitor could become an unlawful visitor um, if they are um, a lawful visitor initially, so perhaps invited onto your property. Um, but then they go beyond the permission, beyond the uh, occupier's permission, and that would make them an unlawful visitor. And um, you would discuss um, any liability in relation to the 1984 Act, not the 1957 one. So it applies to people who are unlawful visitors who are injured on premises um, due to a danger created by the state of a premise or things done or omitted on them. It only covers personal injuries, so damage to property or um, anything like that isn't covered, just personal injuries. So what needs to be proved? So first of all, 
um, the occupier must be aware of the danger. If you remember in the Herrington case, <clears throat> I, I, I told you that the railways board knew of the damage to the fence. So the occupier needs to be aware of the danger or have reasonable grounds to believe it exists. The occupier also must know or have reasonable grounds to believe that people may come into the vicinity of this danger. And again, if you remember the Herrington case, the Railways Board knew not only of the damage to the fence, but also that people did use um, the damage to cross the line. And then the final requirement there is that the risk should be one that an occupier should be expected to protect against. And the duty owed laid down in section one, subsection four of the 1984 Act is that an occupier should take such care as is reasonable in the circumstances. So reasonable in the circumstances. And of course here, the circumstances is that somebody has trespassed on someone's land. So let's look in a little bit more detail about or on this standard of care that's expected. Well, first of all, it's judged objectively. So it's a reasonable test. And certain things are taken into account. Um, clearly, the, the, the higher the risk, the more precautions an occupier is expected to take. So if you have an electric line, and a, a, a live railway, clearly the Railways Board should really have um, taken quite a lot of precautions to ensure that you could not get on that line because clearly there's a big risk of harm um, from electricity. The nature of the premises will be relevant and you know, how public they are. The degree of the danger will be taken into account and then how practical it is to take the precautions and also the age of the trespasser will be relevant. So an occupier might not actually be liable if the danger is obvious and liability may depend upon the time of the year or even the time of the day. As mentioned, an occupier only has to take cost effective and practical steps to protect against obvious dangers. And they're not liable if the occupier is not aware of the danger and has no reason to suspect that there may be a danger. Let's look at these restrictions in a little bit more detail. Each one has a case and you need to know the restriction and the case to apply it to a scenario. So first of all, the occupier won't be liable um, if it's not an ob um, if it's um, an obvious danger. So a trespasser is expected um, to to be aware of obvious dangers. Um, in Ratcliffe versus McConnell, um, and those people who know the um, Disney film Pocahontas will recognise Ratcliffe. There, it's the way to remember the case. Ratcliffe versus McConnell. Um, basically, an, an adult trespassed into a swimming pool. Now, clearly, a swimming pool is an obvious danger, and the um, adult injured himself while swimming. Um, so, the case illustrates that the occupier doesn't need to warn an adult trespass of risks of obvious dangers. So the courts will also take into consideration the time of the day and the time of the year of the accident. So here the case is Donoghue versus Folkestone Properties. And here an adult trespassed onto a harbour slipway. Um, it was actually midnight, it was also winter. Um, he dived into the sea um, and he hit his head on a mooring pipe. Um, uh, the mooring pipe would have actually been visible at low tide. Now basically, the, the, the court held that the occupier didn't owe the claimant a duty of care because you wouldn't expect a trespasser to jump into a harbour in the middle of the night in winter. Um, so there was no liability. 
Um, so the occupier does not have to spend lots of money in protecting, in making the premises safe. OK, so this case here is an absolutely key case. Tomlinson versus Congleton, Congle, Tomlinson versus Congleton Borough Council. Again, this is an adult trespasser. Um, he became injured um, in a lake. He dived in, basically. Um, and the council knew the lake was dangerous and they had actually planned to close it off completely. Um, and the court held that the danger actually here wasn't created by the state of the premises, but actually by the claimant diving into the water. And that trespassers have to take some responsibility for their actions. Um, and it's not reasonable for an occupier to spend lots of money preventing visitors from being injured by an obvious danger. Um, and this is a good case to use um, when your scenario mentions that there's a warning sign. So the warning sign, any warning sign, you know, can limit liability um, if, if it seems to do enough, if, if, if it um, is cost effective and practical. To prevent um, danger from uh, to prevent injury from obvious dangers, and then an occupier is not liable if they're not aware of the danger or they have no reason to suspect that there is a danger. The case for this is Ryan versus Asbury Water Park, um, and here there were warning notices, but the claimant jumped into the lake and was injured by objects at the bottom. And the occupier didn't even know that there were objects at the bottom of the lake at all. No liability because the occupier didn't know of the dangerous object. And finally, let's look at the duty owed to child trespassers. So um, in the 1984 Act, unlike the 1957 Act, there is no special circumstances for child trespassers. They are treated the same way as adult trespassers. Um, and an illustrative case here is Keon versus Coventry Healthcare National Health Ser Service Trust. Here, a child was injured by falling off a fire escape. Now, the child should not have been on the fire escape, so he was an unlawful um, visitor. And again, there was no date, there was no liability because the danger wasn't created by the state of the premises. It was created by the child being on the fire state escape. Baldacio uh, versus West Wittering. Here, um, a child was injured um, from diving from a beacon that was um, on the beach. Um, so he, he wasn't a trespasser when he was on the beach but he was a trespasser when he got onto the beacon. Um, and again, it was held that this was an obvious danger and the injuries were not as a result from the state of the premises, but of diving off the beacon, which he shouldn't have been on. So that for these questions on occupiers' liability for OCR A-level, the question will be a scenario question um, that you will need to obviously apply the law to. Um, so you'll need to, the first thing to do will be to work out, is the um, person in the scenario a lawful or an unlawful visitor? Perhaps they start as a lawful visitor and then become an unlawful visitor. So hopefully you now know the law in respect to both Occupiers Liability 1957, Lawful Visitors and Occupiers Liability Act 1984, and Lawful Visitors. The third lesson in this series will be um, an evaluation of Occupiers Liability, which will appear on the channel at a later date. That brings us to the end of this lesson in law. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe to find more videos. Bye.